Hey guys, VicHD here. Now, I wanted to do this video for two particular reasons. One, because this is the actual 20-year uh, animation anniversary of mine, because I actually started uh, earlier in the year. I started January making sprite movies just for fun, but I never would have expected this to become a career of sorts. And not only that, this month in particular, I believe it would be the 28th of October, that's when I officially started making Four Swords Misadventures. That was like the original pilot where I basically voiced all the characters by myself just to see if uh, if I could get this off the ground. And who would have thought that after 20 years, I'll still be, I'll still be making um, animations to this day. So just for that, I just want to say thank you for all of my fans, followers, supporters, all the voice actors, all the uh, artists and animators that have helped out over the years. Because without them, I wouldn't have uh, been able to tell this story. My animation journey kind of had these humble beginnings of sorts. Because um, when it came to animation, uh, I kind of stumbled onto it by accident. And it was all thanks to a, uh, a Mortal Kombat parody. Because uh, at the time, I was diving into console emulation, and I had uh, Super Nintendo and Sega emulators on my old computer. And I was looking for cheat codes for Mortal Kombat 3, and I stumbled into a, a video game parody called Mortal Kombat Outtakes. And from that point on, I got hooked on Newgrounds. And all the video game parodies that were available at the time, you know, everything from, from Mario, Zelda, uh, Mega Man, uh, Sonic, I just dove deeper and deeper into the rabbit hole that I just wanted to see if I could get involved in, uh, in animation and create my own content. And eventually I did, and I became self-taught in, in Adobe Flash, now called Adobe Animate, and I've been doing this ever since. Thankfully, through the tutorials on uh, Newgrounds, I was able to learn more and more about the, the, the program here. Now, I started uh, animating, I think, as far back as, like, with, with Flash 5, that version of Flash. And I slowly transition to like uh, the other upgrades, and I currently use Flash CS6. I, I haven't upgraded to the latest version called Adobe Animate. I might eventually, but who knows. As for branching out to other animation programs, I've thought about it, but I feel too uh, too accustomed to the user interface in, uh, in the Adobe program here that it's just a little hard for me to adapt to another program, you know? I have, however, adapted to uh, video editing programs. Because originally I did use Windows Media Editor and eventually uh, went up to uh, Sony Vegas. And Sony Vegas felt a little more user-friendly in that regard. And I've stuck with using Sony Vegas for the past few years. Just to uh, format the, the, the content that I make from SWF to MP4 in a higher resolution. So thanks for sticking around. Thanks for all the support that I've gotten over the years. And I hope to make more content. Though it has been kind of a ride a lot of uh, personal and professional ups and downs overall i'm still here still kicking without your support i wouldn't be here and i would really appreciate if you guys spread the word on, on the channel and the content help out any way you can to keep the show running keep the show going because this channel is essentially a one-man studio and the content here has been it's been a mixed bag overall because i've been also trying to expand on other things like let's plays and retrospective videos Trying to see um, what else I can come up with just to maintain relevancy on the channel. As for the origins of Four Swords Misadventures, believe it or not, this started off roughly like at the end of 2002 when I was checking out a lot of Zelda fan sites, particularly like Zelda Universe. And I read about uh, this Game Boy Advance port of A Link to the Past, which I played on Super Nintendo, and how it had this like special bundle with the game called Four Swords, which was a multiplayer Zelda game. And I thought that the idea was kind of neat. So eventually, over time, I started diving deeper and deeper towards, uh, let's say, all the sprite movies that were in like Newgrounds and all the, the parodies that were based on uh, other intellectual properties. And I stumbled upon one particular series called 8-Bit Theater. And 8-Bit Theater being a parody of Final Fantasy 1 involving, let's say, the main protagonist just trying to find an adventure or trying to like earn some kind of a bounty and they just screw up along the way in the, in, in the process and I love that out that idea of uh, making a parody of the original source material that was actually one of the web comics from Brian Clevenger it started off as a web comic but it eventually saw like this uh, this animated adaptation of it on Newgrounds I eventually dove into other uh, web comic concepts there was one called Zelda comic which was based off of Zelda 2 and that was also a neat idea 
And even this obscure um, webcomic that was called Hyrulearity, which was a Zelda Universe original that only lasted a few issues, and it just it was basically a parody of the Wind Waker art style and the, and the game overall, but it was like a loose continuation. I, I basically had the idea like one day when I was bored in a casino. It's like, why a casino? Well, my parents were compulsive gamblers. So there were times where I had nothing to do at a casino. Waiting for my parents to, uh, you know, finish playing with Blackjack or Baccarat because they were always like stuck in that. While uh, I was usually like either playing slot machines here and there just to, to spend time like distracting myself with something else but there were times where i was like flat broke and i was just stuck in a casino doing nothing and then i just started like you know thinking to myself like uh of different things that uh i was just like spacing out and just like randomly thinking about certain things while in the casino and then i was wondering like seeing like things like uh ape theater and uh and zelda comic i was wondering wouldn't it be funny if someone actually made a Four Swords a parody? And then it just dawned to me saying like, why don't I just make my own? And this was back in mid, early mid 2003. It was during a time where um, I was I was about to move to Margarita, to the island of Margarita, because originally I lived in Caracas and I still do. Uh, eventually that didn't work out. But it was during the time when my, my family wanted to start over and move to the island. And... Um, I didn't really have a computer available at the time. I didn't know anything about uh, editing on Paint or, or Photoshop or editing or, or making animations in Flash or, or video or anything like that. And the only thing I could do at the time was basically uh, write a script for it. So I, I actually still have that script, by the way. It's not very good. So uh, I was uh, basically bored out of my mind one day and eventually like decided to buy a notebook and just... just write a script based on these uh, these characters and uh and just have fun with making my own version my own take of the of these characters i should point out that this was like around 2003 and i had like very um very limited internet access if you will and i didn't really have a computer i only had like a tv and an n64 in my house when i was living over there but at the time of course i also heard about the um the gamecube game four swords adventures Keep in mind, I was developing the script just out of pure fun and imagination, and the um, I never really played the games until much later through emulation. It was just me, like, tr just uh, dicking around, uh, trying to figure out, like, what kind of jokes can I tell? How can I tell the story? Because my show has always been more character-based rather than than being dungeon-focused or, or, or plot-based. So the main... The main point of Four Swords Misadventures was like having the four characters constantly argue and just mess up along the way. That was the, the original intention. Though initially I was basing it on the four-man ensemble that was like in Star Fox 64. Subconsciously I was also basing it on Ninja Turtles because I grew up on that. And um, I mean you can kind of see the, um, the connections here because we have Green Link being like Leonardo, Red Link is Raphael, Blue Link is Donatello... And Purple Link would be like Michelangelo, but he would be more of a novice instead of a slacker. This wasn't too far off from the original concept, where I made, let's say, the... Uh, in this case, Link is the main hero, uh, Red is the rebel, Blue is the smart one, and Purple being the noob, or the uh, the novice. The comic relief. I, I, I really couldn't categorize like what Purple Link was supposed to be at the time. But eventually I decided to let just label him as like that naive noob was like very new to uh to uh, to these adventures and all that so he's like the one asking all the questions not knowing what to do but eventually he tries to figure something out but he has a lot of untapped potential nonetheless that's that's how i've always pictured like purple link it, it was just my idea and that just kind of expanded more and more as time went on eventually i got the uh other voice actors involved um i basically started this like in a chat room in Newgrounds years ago to see if anyone was actually interested in, in voice acting in this project. Of course, I got involved with Spike the Penguin, with uh, Mario Simic, with Martin Kemp. Eventually, I met other voice actors like uh, Bald Boy 64 and uh, Doomy 5, as well as Bell Shipper Rousse. <laughs> we call him Bell for short. But overall, um, the cast has grown and grown immensely, and I think the most surprising member of the cast has to be Kira Buckland because back then she also went through other usernames like uh, Kagomi, 
as in like you know Yasha, or or she went as the the username Rena Chan, but now she goes professionally by her real name Kira Buckland. Um, she was like one of the few um voice actors voice actresses if you will, in Newgrounds at the time, and she was making a name for herself. And the funny thing is that when I uh, posted uh, on the forum that I was looking for voice actors for the show and all that. She was the first one to pop up and say, can I be Zelda? I mean, I was floored when I saw that comment. And I was like, I mean, I, I, I couldn't say no. But at the time, I wasn't exactly developing the, the script with Zelda in mind. So eventually, by the time I started writing episode three, uh, I started writing uh, her parts in the episode exclusively for her. Because it just felt like a huge honor that she actually approached to me, not once, but twice. To see if I was uh, interested in uh, in getting her as uh, Princess Zelda, I could not turn down the offer. She read the messages in the forums. She even messaged me personally through Yahoo. Yeah, I, I still have that Yahoo mail. I don't use it much though, but I, I'm more on a Gmail now. I've kept in contact with her ever since, and uh, I am very grateful for for all the help and all the support that I've gotten from her directly. Because I never would have imagined that I would have. Uh, a, a high talented voice actress in my cast. I, I wish her all the best because she's gotten a lot of other, um, a lot of other anime roles and other anime dubs, and and she has really made a name for herself over the years. And I'm, I'm very grateful for all she has done for the for for the series, as well as uh, well, wish her the best in her career, and uh, who knows, maybe um, eventually she will continue helping out with the, with this series. I gotta see if she is uh, available, though. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Regarding the professional ups and downs that I've held, that I've had with the series, a lot of things have kind of happened over the years. Uh, usually, like a lot of things, either personal and professional. Sometimes relationship issues got in the way. Sometimes family-related issues got in the way. Other times, technical issues got in the way, where I had my like two computers die on me at the same time. That was kind of frustrating. Or, or the fact that in episode 7 when um, my computer crashed and I thought I practically lost episode 7 when it was in development. Fortunately, I created a CD-ROM backup of that episode and uh, I was able to complete the episode. It, it was just... There was just a lot of crazy stuff happening back then uh, behind the scenes. Not to mention all the constant um, shifting of the voice actors here and there. Which, again... I mean, it was really, it was a creative decision on my part because there were times where a voice actor just wasn't available in one time and I had no choice but to replace him. So if if you have noticed like on occasion where you would hear uh, Red Link sound different or Blue Link sound different, that's because I had to recast them. <laughs> there was really no other option. Like in the case of uh, Spike the Penguin, he wasn't available after episode three, so eventually I got Bald Boy sixty four to uh, to voice Red. Then the Blue Link's voice actor after episode seven, I kind of lost contact with him, and eventually I got um, I got Bald Boy to step in to play Blue, and someone, a fan of uh, of the series, convinced Spike the Penguin to come back for episode seven. <laughs> Um, and of course, uh, Mario Simic actually stuck around until episode 10, until he eventually decided to hang it up and then move on to other things. And eventually I got involved, uh, I got in contact, sorry, I got in contact with Bell, and he was also a fan of the show. Mm -hmm. And when I hired him, he sounded so much like the original voice actor, it was just, it felt like such a coincidence <laughs> that he just sounded so much like him. And he eventually stuck around. Like for, with uh, episode 11. So, yeah, there's been a lot of like cast shuffling over the years. So a lot of things kind of happen in and out. But uh, overall, I mean, the main purpose of the show is just to, um, you know, make something fun and entertaining for the rest of the cast and crew and just try to keep things um, Zelda oriented. Because uh, the when I write the story, the, the script, it's supposed to be like very original, but based on the source material. The best way I can describe it is that, um, you know how like Resident Evil, like the, the Paul W.S. Anderson Resident Evil movies are like its own thing, but uses assets from the original source material. That's kind of the whole thing that I do too. I borrow elements from the original games and try to adapt them into my story. 
and that's that's kind of been like the whole point like throughout where i try to continue the story as as far as i can to see what else i can add or what other references i can include and it's been it's been quite a ride overall uh, i just hope that i could continue uh with other projects moving forward regardless um I just want to thank everyone for, for all the support and all the contributions. Uh, the voice actors, the um, animators, the artists, everyone who uh, somehow helped expand my vision and, uh, and and continue the series moving forward. And by the way, there is going to be an episode 12. I am working on it, but uh, YouTube has not exactly made things easy for me as of late. Um, considering how I went on hiatus at one point. And I've... Um, trying to I'm trying to pick up the pieces where I left off considering how like in 2017 there was this whole adpocalypse scenario and there was this all this whole political crisis where I live in Venezuela and uh, during that time my dad passed away and there was just so much that was happening so fast I, I felt so creatively burnt out that I wasn't really sure if this was like the right thing to do so eventually I at one point um, decided to like find a real job for a few years working as a teacher. Uh, I eventually worked for three years at a local high school and uh, I was eventually laid off like around 2022 and I started going back to the channel and I've had mixed results overall but uh, I'm just trying to push forward as best as I can. Those who can help out spread the word of the channel. I also have Patreon, I also have coffee, I have uh, uh, Ken Hank. Uh, Ken Hank is that other uh, platform where I'm trying to promote, let's say, uh, electronic uh, devices, usually like game consoles or, or controllers or uh, external hard drives. And if I um, um, try to promote other products uh, through that platform, I earn a little a little commission out of the uh, the products that are being sold. But overall, um, I'm just trying to make make ends meet as the as best as possible, considering how uh, I'm still kind of struggling financially, and I've kind of have to resort to selling my own my own video game library at this point so it's been kind of rough uh trying to uh stay relevant with everything that's been going on so if you can support the channel in any way you can feel free to do so those who have supported me over the years again thank you those who uh can continue supporting me i completely understand it's been uh, a hell of a ride a hell of a process just to keep the show running and uh, being a one-man animator is not easy, so there you go. Um, again, thank you all for sticking around. Things have been kind of rough, but I'm still pushing forward regardless. And uh, I just hope to continue making more content for you guys, regardless of what that content may be. Be it animation, be it Let's Plays, be it retrospectives, or other types of videos. I just want to expand upon it and make this uh, a better living and just earn earn a respectable living again with what I do. But uh, yeah, that's about it. I'll see you in the next video and uh, take care. Thanks again for all the support and all the, the laughs. And I'll continue uh, making content for you guys down the road. All right. Take care. See ya.